Hey, now let's turn our focus to one of the world's greatest photographers. Neil Leifer has been taking pictures of some of the world's most famous events and people since the 1950s. The photojournalist who grew up in a poor, hardworking Jewish family in New York City achieved acclaim for his sports photos, especially those that came out of his long relationship with Muhammad Ali. Leifer is the only photographer inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Now, at age 78, he is selling his entire collection to the brand management company Authentic Brands Group, ABG, where we met up with, with Lifer, will oversee and preserve his extensive and notable archive. Only on CBS This Morning, we talked to Lifer at this turning point in his legendary career. Neil Lifer was an avid sports fan as a kid. It became clear to me that the best ticket in the house was where the photographer sat. For 60 years, lifers had a press pass to many of sports' most iconic moments. Photographing boxing champions. You couldn't mess with Ali. He made a hero out of everybody. Racing champions. Secretariat? I mean, this is the Muhammad Ali of racing, for sure. And presidents. It's the only time in my life I've ever sat with my back to the sporting event. This is where you grew up. Right, fourth floor. The middle two windows on the fourth floor. Lifer was raised on New York's Lower East Side. Where are we? This is the Vladek houses. They were built during World War II and it was a low income housing project. From here, it was a short walk to Henry Street Settlement, which offered free classes to poor kids in the neighborhood. And the camera club was right there. You met up on the second floor. Second floor, those two windows, that was a dark room. The club allowed him to borrow a camera. I became the picture editor of the school newspaper and photographer as well. I started enjoying seeing my name under the picture, photographed by Neil Leifert. That was pretty cool. <laughs> and to be honest, it's 60 plus years later, I still get excited when I see my name under the picture. <laughs> at the NFL title game at Yankee Stadium in 1958, Leifer caught the climactic moment when the Colts beat the Giants in sudden death. It's called the greatest game ever played. December 28, 1958, my 16th birthday. Here's the goal line. I was exactly 10 yards in front of him. Lifer had perfect position because he'd volunteered to take veterans in wheelchairs to their area just behind the end zone. You took that picture to Sports Illustrated? I thought, now I have a picture they might publish. Was that what essentially got you in the door? No, what got me in the door was I delivered sandwiches at the stage delicatessen. The stage catered their closings. I knew the door. <laughs> Less than three years later, at age 18, Lifer reached an early landmark. This is your first cover. Well, you never forget your first cover. This was November 21st, 1961. I was just thrilled. If you're a photographer, the cover is the gold medal. He would shoot over 200 covers for Sports Illustrated and Time. The best cover I ever shot was a cover I did for Time Magazine on Bear Bryant. I wanted to photograph him as though he were looking through a chalkboard, and I double exposed the plays. My favorite covers are the ones that came from here, not accidents. Yeah. And that was, that was, it's certainly the best one I've done. Yeah. My most famous picture of Muhammad Ali standing over Sunday Liston didn't even make the cover of Sports Illustrated. It didn't get a single award. How do you account for that? That picture has everything people want to remember about young Ali. As his reputation grew, the picture grew along with him. Many now consider it the greatest sports photograph ever taken. So you're right by ringside here. I am on the apron. All these guys wish they were where you were. This is being in the right seat, and then a good photographer doesn't miss when he's in the right seat. Why do you think you were successful? In my case, it was pretty simple. I worked harder than anyone else. I was the first person in the stadium. I knew what time the shadow went across the field because it might determine what sideline I wanted to shoot on. I'm not naturally gifted, and there are a number of very good photographers. Like, says Lifer, his fellow photographer, Walter Eos Jr. He seemed to take pictures with his eyes closed, great pictures, consistently. <laughs> That's really annoying, isn't it's it? It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> but you obviously must have trusted your own instincts. I, I knew that I was a good photographer, but I wanted to be a great photographer. This is my, my newest book. With an aluminum print as its cover. It's a heavyweight on itself. I am so thrilled. Boxing weighs nearly 20 pounds. And, this is your dream uh, because it's all boxing. It's my best pictures. I hate to say it, it'll be my legacy book. 
it includes Lifer's favorite picture. Where are you? That's me right there, ringside. Hanging a camera from the rafters of the Houston Astrodome, Lifer perfectly captured Ali's knockout of Cleveland Williams in 1966. This is the only picture I ever took in my life where I'm looking at it 60 years, 55 years after it was taken. There is nothing I would change. It's my favorite picture and always will be. It's an amazing wow, photograph. It's also the only photograph of Neil Lifer's own that he has hanging in his home. That's it. Yeah, that's oh, the only Neil one. Lifer, what a career. What a it's career. It's so nice to talk to people, Anthony, who are so good at what they do and yep. don't mind sharing. Yeah. Yep. And sharing we're, what they've since done. we've been talking about Tiger Woods today, yeah. uh, we also want to share a shot Neil took of Tiger Woods uh, back in 2005 on the 16th hole at Augusta National when Tango, Tiger sank that amazing chip shot that went right to the lip and dropped in. Uh, he won the Masters, of course, that year. That's at the Masters. That's his caddy, Steve Williams, with him there. He does uh, capture moments. I like that he said, I like seeing my name on the photograph yeah. still. I also and, like it. He says, a good photographer gets in position, and a great one doesn't miss. Yeah. Don't that's miss. That's it. You know, that's, you get, he said, you, you know, I was in the big leagues. I couldn't miss. And, and, but it was all about for him. He, he did share with us a, show to, a photo he actually took of, uh, of Princess Diana's uh, wedding to Charles. And he, act, he was in the right position, but Charles turned his head just at the last minute. He said, I hate this picture. It's actually pretty beautiful but it's like he wanted the perfection, didn't get yeah. it. I thought, too, it was interesting. He said his favorite photos are the ones that he's planned out. Yeah. When he said, you know, when it comes from the heart. I thought that was, I really liked him. And he's then, of course, lot, and then the yeah. Ali uh, photo, the famous one of, of, of uh, him standing over Sonny Liston. Uh, the photo doesn't change, but our viewing and understanding yes. of the yeah. photo changes. And I think that's part, part of why he loves that last photograph is, although it is a picture of Ali, it could be of anyone. It's, it, it works for any boxer you, you put in there. Yeah. The Ali photograph of him over Sonny Liston is very specific to Muhammad Ali, and that's why people are so drawn to it. Muhammad Ali was gorgeous. Quite a legacy. Such a gorgeous, gorgeous man. He yeah. was a beautiful human being. Wow.